Hi, welcome back to tutorial uh, C++ on file operations. We're reading data in from files and we're going to read integers in this example. So our file data.txt has some different integer values in there. It's got the number zero on a line all by itself. It's got minus two, it's got 33. Um, I have to get the tab and some uh, blank spaces. Then I've got some blank lines, right? And we've got the number 2,904 at the end. And so we're going to use that, right, that extraction operator, like the same operator we use with C in, to read input then from our file. And we know then the way this works is it skips over any leading white space when it reads in an integer. And as long as it can read in um, digits that represent an integer or uh, negative signs, positive signs are allowed, it will read that in and store it in the integer. And so we're going to see if we can successfully read from a file. Right? And what we were doing, so we've got this integer called val here. And what we were doing before is before we went into this while loop, we tried to read in the value, uh, the value, the integer value is stored in file. And then we checked the state and we said, well, while in file that good, it was true. We were just going to go ahead and print out what we had successfully read in. And then we would try to read again. And we're just going to keep looping through here, reading and printing as long as we're successful. Then when we're no longer successful, right, we'll print out a message to let us know the while loop ended. And then we call the print state function, which that print state function that we've looked at before just prints out the state. If we So we're going to pass it our file stream in file, our file stream object. Right, and we're going to then access the member functions good, fail, bad, EOF to let us know what the stream state is. And remember, there's what our data looks like. All right. And so if we run the executable that I built for this, and let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay, we can see that we read in the number zero, negative two, 33, 15, 2094. So it skipped over white space in here. Like I said, actually, if I had some leading white space here before the zero and say that, we could run this again and see it will still read in the zero. Notice then when the while loop ended, we were in a fail state. The fail bit was set because it likely then, right after it read in 2094, the next time it tried to read an integer, that would fail. And so there is a new line character here. So it probably tried to read something, uh, failed to read that because it also encountered the end of file. And notice that that flag was set as well too. Like I said, if we were to run this again, all I did was put leading white space there before the zero. Right? If we were to just run that again, notice it still reads in the zero correctly. So the, that extraction operator works with our uh, input file stream object in the same way it does with CEN. Right? Now let's take a, a look at another way to do this. So right here, this looks a little cumbersome in terms of we read it and then we check the stream state. We could actually then do this. We could actually move in file val in here because this operation will return whether or not it successfully read. So we can get rid of this here. So what we're asking the while loop to do is we're saying, OK, go ahead and try to read this integer value from the file. If it returns true because it was good and it was successful, then we'll print it out. If it returns false, well, we know then we'll exit our loop and we'll come down here and we'll print out this information. So let me make sure I've saved this. Let's clear, clear, the, clear the terminal. Let's rebuild. All right, run our executable. All right. And so we successfully read in all our integer values again. So that's a much more compact way to do this. And then let's see what happens if we have a non-integer value. So we know that it reads zero, it reads minus two, it reads 33. Let's just after the two, um, actually on the same line, let's just type A, B, C. So what we're going to see is we should see this reading the negative two 
it will encounter this character A and say, oh, that's not a numeric digit, so I'm going to stop now. Did I read something that I could successfully turn it into an integer? Actually, I didn't mean to do that. Yes, I successfully read in this minus two. I can convert that to negative two. And what happens is the next time we loop through and try to read A, B, C, well, it's going to try to read A, and it's going to say, uh, no, that's not an integer. Going to put the stream into a fail state, and we should jump out of the wall loop. So we should only see that we successfully read 0 and minus 2. So we don't need to rebuild when we make changes to the uh, text file. We just need to rerun the executable. Oh, maybe I did not save this. I mean, we should see something different here. So let me do that. If I don't make changes to the data, if I don't save the data file, I, yes, I hadn't saved the data file. I saved it then with control S. So we can see, right, that it read the zero, it read the minus two. Notice the fail bit is set and not the end of file. The well, one thing then we could do in here is if we knew that we had several integers we needed to read from our file and we wanted to know if it read everything, what we could do is we could check then the condition here that made this quit. So outside here, when the while loop ended, right, what we could do is we'll still print the states, but we could say if in file dot eof. So if we're at the end of file, right, if that's set, Let's just print out a message that successfully read all file data. Else, let's just go ahead and print out a message that failed to read until end of file. So that's something that we also have to check, right? Because this loop just tells us when either we fail to read or we reach end of file. Like I said, if we want to know whether what condition made the loop stop, then we could test for it later. And so let me make sure I save this. Let's uh, rebuild. Let's rerun, and then you can see we still have our corrupted data in our file. So it only read the zero and the minus two. We got our message, the while loop ended. I'm still printing the state so we could see this, but notice, right, we print out the message failed to read until end of file because this, when we call in file, member function EOF for end of file, that didn't return true, it returned a zero for false. So we know in that case, we had some sort of failure to read the data and well, what should our program do, right? That's obviously program dependent. If we were counting on all of the data, maybe we're trying to sum up the data or something, we needed all of it. Chances are we would just want to print out some sort of error message like we did to let us know why things failed. And then, right, we have to go in and look and say, well, was there something wrong with the file data? Typically that's what that is in this case. And let's see that that is the case. Let's get rid of the ABC here. And usually we don't make our files look this messy, right, the way I've done it. When we create a file, we usually write things out in sort of a neat orderly fashion, but I wanted to do it this way to show you that it does skip over white space. But if we wanted to maybe even this out a bit, we could do something like this, right? Or we could put everything on one line by itself. So that's one thing. A lot of times when you're given a file, you have to be given information about how the file is structured so you can properly read it. All right. So I saved the file. I should just be able to run the executable again here because we didn't say, change the program. All right. So notice we read everything in the file and we get our message successfully read all file data. The fail bit was set because it wasn't able to read but the reason it wasn't able to read was because it detected the end of the file. Like I said, that's a technique then. You can know if you got all the way through your file. All right, so that's it for this tutorial.
Uh, we'll take a look at uh, more complex methods of reading in uh, maybe mixed data in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.